What's going on? The playoffs are officially here. We got game one, National League Wild Card Nationals versus Brewers. We're going to talk all about it. What is going on, everybody? An episode a day for a long time because there's a lot of baseball to talk about. My name is John Boy. If you're a first-time viewer or listener, thank you for hanging out with us. I'm going to talk some baseball, Jake, some playoff baseball. Are you ready? Regular season was just a warm-up. This, this is our real season. That's what all the badass baseball podcasters say all the time. I'm I'm ready, man. And yeah, if you're if you're because I know this this is you. If you're the new Nationals or Brewers fan that's tuning in for the first time, because you're just itching away right now, because the wild card is an absolute nightmare. Something to do to distract you from the wild card? Leave a review. So welcome <laughs> and thank you, <laughs> the, dude. The the wild card is a nightmare, and. I think this one feels a lot like the 2017 Yankees twins to me. I think we have a clear David and Goliath wild card. And I, I don't think that I'm in line with everyone. I think this is my own personal. Uh, I think there's some people that feel the same way as me, but others that are like, nah, it'll be a good game and stuff. I think this is a tough matchup for the Brewers, but we'll see. I I think you're missing one key factor when you make that comparison is that the Brewers, minus that Yelich dude, they did this last year. So they, they've they done it, and it's, I mean, you look at the lineup and you kind of chuckle to yourself a little bit because there's, there's a few guys having solid seasons, but nobody jumps off the page. And they are just going to throw the whole kitchen sink. And they've been doing that for the past month or so. And they did it last year at the playoffs. So they're like, I I feel like there's a lot of teams going into this postseason that aren't sure. Think of the Yankees. There's rumors that Tanaka might come out after an opener. or A a lot of teams aren't sure how they want to burn their bullpens or how they want to operate. The Brewers, no. <laughs> the Brewers will do anything. I, I know a lot of teams have, you know, leave leave your leave your ego at the door. We're we're gonna need you where we need you. Yeah, that doesn't work for Araldis Chapman. For the Brewers, it really does. <laughs> um if if they have a lead and it's the seventh inning, like hater, you might have to get hot and ride it out, dude. Um, if you need a big out somewhere else, it, it could be anyone. And I think the the Brewers have that. The Nats, I think what you're saying is the Nats are the more talented team. Yeah, I mean, and they have Scherzer as one of the best pitchers of this generation starting for them. And then there's some underlying numbers that are just kind of tough. And what the interesting thing is, is what the Brewers do good, Jake, is they just win. Like they don't, they yeah. kind of, they kind of, um, like they at bat you to death. Like they, everyone yeah. is giving you a good at bat, so they make you work. So th- that's something they could do to Scherzer's. They could like you know now you got to face this dude, now you got to face this dude, and everything's kind of a battle in its own way. With they're kind of like a nagging battles. That's kind of what the Brewers do best, and then the pitching's the same way. Like um, they already have gone into our starters aren't starters, and we'll get into right. that. Like the guy Woodruff who is starting for the Nationals. Or for the, sorry, for the Brewers, Woodruff is the announced starter. His last two outings have been two innings pitched both times because the Brewers have already canceled starting pitching. That's what they do when they go to the postseason. Throwers. Just a bunch of throwers. Like, throwers. Woodruff started all season. He had he has a game against the Nationals this year that's like six innings pitched, one earned run. But he's not going to be asked. No, that was his last, or I, maybe that was this year. He's not going to be asked to do that. He's going to be no, asked to go two he, innings. He he also got injured, so he's he's not fully built up. He hasn't been throwing a hundred bullets, um, and that's and that's part of the 
their thing at this point. Like Bob, Bobby Woodruff, you're you're going to go two, three max, and that's doubtful. Um, and you're going to get the kitchen sink, and it's it's kind of exciting. It's it's fun how Milwaukee does it, but um, yeah, I think it, it it feels like the Nats are favored in this game. You know, you could be sixty forty, you could be seventy thirty, whatever your lean is. But it just it feels like the answer to this game is going to be so definite. Like, damn, that Brewers approach works. They just next guy up and they do it. Or you walk away and you're like, yeah, Scherzer, Strawberg, Rendon, and Soto just own this game. Yeah, and so Scherzer's getting the start for the Nationals with Corbin and Strasburg ready to come out of the pen because their pen isn't their strong suit. So those guys are. Their top three pitchers are the best, I think the most war for any top three pitchers in the MLB this year. It's crazy. So, I mean, that's tough. The Brewers have... I don't see the Brewers. The Brewers have to win this game against Scherzer. A little bit, and that's that's kind of what I was saying, is that I, I think this postseason what you're going to see is uh, not a lot of pitchers are going to even have the opportunity to lose a game. Like, if you're a pitcher and you're starting to have a bad inning, you're going to get yanked, uh, except if you're Max Scherzer. And that's where things get kind of wild Jim because he hasn't been the Max Scherzer since he's come back from injury he's got seven starts 38 innings pitched to a 474 ERA so that's where things get kind of wild here because guess what if if it's the second inning and Scherzer's got two runners on base and he hasn't given up a run yet you don't pull Scherzer if that's Bob Woodruff and a tough lefty is up, they probably go to Gio Gonzalez or someone because it's it's not Max Scherzer. So it's one of those things that early on in the game, yeah, that could play in the Brewers' favor. Yeah. Um, dude, I'll, 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 the other thing, and we're kind of bouncing all around here, is that, is that uh, you know what? Maybe I should finish off Scherzer. I have some numbers for Scherzer before we move on. Okay. Scherzer versus the Brewers. Um, the most hits is Mike Moustakis, who has a 167 batting average, six hits and 36 at bats. Okay. Yasmani <laughs> Grandal, one hit in 16 at bats, 0.63 batting average against Scherzer. Not great. Lorenzo Kane, yeah. zero hits in 15 at bats. Do you believe in do, baby? Ryan Braun, who may or may not be in the game. He's been a little injured. Calf strain out for the last two days, but they say he's likely. Oh, oh Brownie's playing. Oh, for 14 against Scherzer, Jake. Is that good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, the numbers on the uh, – if you want to talk about that or how much you think that matters – the numbers are bad. It it matters. I mean, Max Scherzer's crazy good, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's tough because Milwaukee only has, and this will sound kind of rude, but they only have so many guys in their lineup who can actually do damage because their team is normally built around uh, the who should have been the MVP of the National League, Christian Yelich, and he is out. <laughs> so it the whole thing is bizarre. Except this stupid Brewers team ruined everything by going on an 18 and 2 stretch in September. Yeah. So I kept diving into numbers. Oh boy. The Nationals versus lefties this year, Jake. Okay. 828 OPS, 356 on base percentage. Really okay. good versus lefties. The Brewers bullpen. It's all lefties. The guys are going to throw. Sutter, Pomerantz, Hader. It's all lefties. I think what's what's turning into the the theme of this is it it feels like the strengths line up with strengths for the Nationals. Like it, you know, you casually say Drew Pomeranz and Suter, and a lot of people know Hader because Hader, when he's right, he's one of the most special relievers in the game. 
and that whole bad guy thing from last year, but moving on. Uh, Drew Pomeranz has been great in the bullpen since he's gotten in there. Yeah. Sutter just won reliever of the month. <laughs> so it, it feels like when those guys come in the game, you're right, it's going to be a push come to shove with these guys who have been doing it for the Brewers versus the str- what's been part of the strength of the Nats. Yeah. The other cool thing about this Brewers, that, that is like, they're like, yeah, we got a good bullpen. It's like, okay, well, your good bullpen is also what they feast on, so we'll see all that plays. It's like, who's good is better? Is our bullpen outdo your splits, or do your splits come after our bullpen? We'll see. Yeah. What's cool is that this Brewers team, and this is why they were so good beca- down the stretch, Jake, because they went to the, we're a bunch of throwers, not starters. They used like 20 pitchers down the stretch, which they don't get to do that in October. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. you they, you don't get to use a pitcher an inning, a pitcher every two innings in October. You can for this game, but you got to get past this game. And we're just talking about this game. The cool thing is, Lyles, Jordan Lyles, he'll probably come in this game after Woodruff, I would guess. They traded for him. Pomerantz, they traded for him. And then Sutter or Suter, I'm not positive how you pronounce it, he just kicked, got called up in September after coming back from Tommy John surgery. These are all additions to this team that may yeah. be getting big innings in this wild card game for the Brewers. That's a lot of fun. And I mean, Sutter, one reliever of the month, like you said, his last eight outings have been scoreless. Pomerantz has a 2.39 ERA in his 25 games since being traded. Lyles has a 2.45 ERA in 11 starts since being traded. Like, they're, they've been crushing it for him. Hater's gone off last 16 games. He has a 142 ERA. All stats are there. Um, just got to play it out. But I, I do think the numbers, and they're just numbers. They don't mean everything. Like, to me, like, oh, shit. This is kind of Nationals' dream matchup. A little bit. It's it's like like we're saying the strengths and the weaknesses the way they line up. I mean, I I don't know. I, I if you're the Brewers, what you have going on in your head is that if the later the game gets for the Brewers, the better their chances are, and vice versa for the Nats. Because Hater is a giant trump card. Um, I I know this hasn't been his. A, a full season. He had he had one real tough stretch, but you're right. He's back. And I mean, I think if they have the lead in the gulp seventh inning, they'll go to him. Didn't they try to get three out of him last postseason? And I think he was yeah. pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, he did so have, he, he, he did blow a save against the Nationals this year once. One blown save versus the Nationals. Um, it was when that lady was sleeping in the front row the entire time. Been there. Yeah. Um, let me let me get the postseason Josh Hader postseason game log open. That's that's exciting stuff. Yeah, he he did two three inning stints uh last postseason, and each time he didn't give up an earned run. So that's that's if you're Milwaukee, you're saying we're gonna use everybody except Hader to get to the seventh inning unscathed. And I mean that's that's the whole push come to shove with this game. Can they do it? Yeah, can they do it? I will say, root for the Brewers. If you so, if you don't know, if you haven't paid attention to the Brewers or the Nationals at all, or right now the Brewers, here's some cool shit to know about this Brewers team. Their leadoff dude is a rookie that got called up in the middle of the year. In the middle of the year, Trent Grisham got called up on August first. He was a midseason accusation he was a big pick right jake first round pick. well yeah and he, he he was a top pick and he was supposed to be a role player and kind of involved down the stretch and then yelich got hurt and now he's he's there he's been leading off i mean he was having a really good september for a while uh 942 ops he calmed down a little bit lately and ends with a 747 ops and um in September, but he's their leadoff dude. Going to be a rookie, okay? Now they also have one of the better rookies in baseball, Keston Hiura, who crushed it this year for them, playing uh, second base, right? No, yeah, 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 second base. Hiura, 
Here is a stud. Yeah, he's um he's another guy who is a big prospect. He's a second baseman. He fin- he played half a season and he hit 303 with 19 homers. Um and that's 84 games, so a, a true like half a season pretty much. Uh so he's a stud. He he has their best offensive numbers by far. Um, he's a line drive line drive hitter who's gotten some pop. He's got a 938 OPS on the year. So that's two rookies, okay? Two rookies. I mean, RC is fun. And then, like we just said, a lot of acquisitions. So it's like like a lot of, I don't know what the term for it, but it's a lot of midseason call-ups or rookies, like guys they didn't plan to be key cogs in a wild card game. But the other part of me is if you're Trent Grisham and your first playoff game is a game seven and against Max Scherzer, you got to have ice in your veins to not be fucking a ball of nerves. Yeah, and I when when I look at the Brewers lineup, I mean Grindal is a plus catcher. Um Thames had a pretty solid year. Uh if he's versus righties, you're going to get a good at bat. Hiura, we just talked about him. Mustakis had a had a better year than I thought before I brought up the stats page. And Brawny turned it on a little bit. I think all their OPSs are in the eights plus. So there's five guys right there that if they're giving you good at bats, Kane has had a lost season, which is pretty wild because he's such a talented ball player. Arcia, not there with the stick. Um, but he had the big postseason game last year. And then Grisham, you're right. I mean, he's a rookie, and they've thrown him into the fire. So if he can give him the goods, that would be huge. Um, but, yeah, I think I think for when I'm looking at the Brewers lineup, I trust Grandal, Tame, Sierra, Moose, and Braun to give you at least a good at bat. Those other three, um, Arcia, Kane, and Grisham, right now I don't feel like – they're total wild cards to me. They they could go down one, two, three, and Scherzer dominates them. If those guys can make Scherzer or Strasburg or whoever it is work, I think that is so big for the Brewers lineup. Yeah. Uh, Moustakas has been having a <clears throat> pretty tough September. A lot of hitless games and then a couple with uh, three multi-hit games that helped the stats, but day-to-day basis has been pretty tough for them. So we'll see. He- and I mean, M- Moustakis has been there, and it's it's crazy how much you and I value that. I mean, he had he ended up with a thirty five homer season, um, and this is going to be what his one two. This is going to be his third postseason. He's played forty one postseason games, so like Moose has been there. I trust that dude. Um, yeah. and for then Washington, I, I think for it's the, their top four. And Jim, I wanted to ask you about this because I I know you you like diving into the lineup a little bit or, or seeing how how these teams function on an everyday basis. I, I love for, dining, diving into the lineup. I I love uh, doing that for teams. I well I'll I'll you know how I do my chicken scratch notes. I got a couple things and it leads into the lineup. The Nationals started this season nineteen and thirty one. <laughs> 19 and 31 they finished from there 74 and 38 so the nationals have been one of the best teams in baseball for two-thirds of the season or whatever it is um and and that makes sense when you look at the lineup and especially their pitching but jim i w- this was interesting to me because they go they lead off trey turner and adam eaton um Eaton has always been a solid OBP guy. Turner has amazing speed, and he's one of the best, better shortstops in the league. And then they go Rendon, Soto, three and four, which has led Anthony Rendon to lead the league in RBIs, and Soto's just a baby monster, basically. But I, I thought you would like that because we're pretty used to – we've been pretty turned on to the bat your best hitter second method that's been kind of going through baseball, and it seems like the Nats are kind of – they got those OPP, OBP good at bat guys up there, and they passed the torch. The Nationals baseball, they play like it's the 90s still. They hit and run. They bunt over people. Yeah. They, they do things a little backwards, and they're doing really well with it. Their, their top four, Trey Turner, Adam Eaton, Rendon, and Soto, um, that's their top four. Like That's their dudes. Robles uh, is always in center. He's usually batting uh, seventh. And then in the middle there, you have like Howie Kendrick, um, Gomes sometimes, Zimmerman sometimes, or Gomes is eighth or Parra's eighth. 
it, it kind of those last couple get bounced around a lot. Looks like Kendrick has usually been batting fifth lately, but those yeah, top four: Turner, Eaton, Rendon, Soto. That's who the Brewers have to focus on. That's that's their four, and I mean, Estrubal Cabrera has been really good since he joined the Nats. Kendrick has been crazy. I, I what I looked was the discussion in Nationals land is, are they going to start Zimmerman or Kendrick, uh, which is a real battle because, like, Ryan Zimmerman is, he's a big part of, like, wh- where that organization come from. He's He's been through everything with them. He's a mainstay. Um, yeah, so that's that's the interesting thing there. And the, the other note I had, and I... Dude, I, I Hendrick's, I, I, like, really hot, though. I... Th- like just looking at the numbers and not watching the Nats day to day because we are honest on this show. If you're if you're a new listener, I mean, just doing the eye test, it feels like it's got to be Kendrick. In his um, last ten games started, his last fifteen games played, Howie Kendrick has a four sixty five batting average, a five twenty one on base percentage, a one dot. Yeah. Two six five OPS, and I could go. I could crawl back all the way to the start of September. It doesn't get that much worse, Jake. It actually gets a little better. It's a four. No, it's a little worse, but four ten batting average, four fifty five on base. Dude, Howie Kendrick in the month of September has a one dot oh seven seven OPS, a four ten batting average, a four fifty five OBP. Yeah, he has to be part of this game. The the article I read was like hinting towards. You got to play Hen- Kendrick just because he's been so good. And I, Zimmerman can still be a threat to pinch hit. You're going to see a lot of pinch hitting in this game. That's, um, well, I, I've got a weird ending speech around that, but I'll, I'll get away from it from now. But yeah, I, if, if I'm, I'm assuming for national fans that they want Kendrick at first as Drupal Cabrera at second base. Um, because I think those guys have just produced the most. And I think there was a discussion to be had between Suzuki and Gomes, but Suzuki just came off the IL, and everything I read made it sound like Gomes was going to start this game. Um, And if they advance in the playoffs, you might see it be more of a discussion, but it sounded like Gomes was going to get the start for sure. One hit in one at bat with the walk. Howie Kendrick versus Josh Hader. So sample size, my God. Wow. <laughs> he crushes him. Um, he does have a double versus Lyles. Uh, and let's see against uh, Woodruff. Nah, 0 for 2 and 3 plate appearances. So nothing there. But you Jim, I, I, I know you and I were wondering how we were going to format this a little bit. I... We we do this when we do our talking Yanks pregame show. I think I have my like official what to watch for in this game. Okay. My what to watch for in this game, for me, it's Turner and Eaton, uh, because they have had really solid regular seasons and they're good ball players, but they're not Rendon and Soto, um. Rendon is has a chance to win the MVP. Soto is special. If if Eaton and Turner each get on base once or twice, or if they get on base three times I, combined, I think the Brewers are in trouble. If you get Rendon and Soto up with those guys on base, this is playoff baseball, and I, this isn't shots fired at Turner and Eaton. Because I think they're both good ball players in their own respective ways, but I think that's kind of the head of the snake there. If if you can clip those guys and you have Rendon coming up with nobody on base and kind of the same for Soto, I think that kind of changes the game. Uh, so I'm th- those are the the big at bats for me that I'm watching for in this game. Mine is the first two innings versus Scherzer. Okay. They have to get to him. Scherzer, uh, in 27 games, he's pitched four innings. Like, you know, minimum, he made it through four innings. Actually, he's never pitched less than four innings this season. 
27 games always has one, two, three, four before he gets pulled. The first inning, he's given up 13 runs, a second six, the third nine, and the fourth 13. You're, if you're penetrating in the fourth, you might not be able to do that. You know what I mean? Like you said, the, these pitchers aren't going to be given the chance to get the loss in a close game. So you got to get them in the first. So you got to get the Scherzer quickly. Otherwise, this looks bad. But what I find very interesting in my rooting interest for this game, because some people might want us to make picks. I don't want to do that. I, right. think, it's, I think it's lazy and, and kind of just stupid. I will say this. It would be a lot of fun if the Brewers win this game with their we have a bunch of throwers and we have a bunch of rookie hitters who at bat you to death it might make for a terrible ds yeah against the dodgers so i think yeah, i'm I'd... rooting for the brewers to put up a hell of a fight but lose so we can see the nationals go scherzer corbin uh strasburg against the dodgers and see a real good series there I mean that it, you. I think you summed it up for everyone who's not a Brewers fan, because <laughs> um, yeah, that that would be incredible when you start thinking of those pitching matchups. But it would be very, it would be very Brewers of the Brewers to not let that happen. Yeah. Um, All right. So thanks for thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll be back tomorrow to recap whatever the hell happened and then preview. The next wild card, Rays at Oakland. We thank you guys. Leave a comment, rating, review, whatever. <laughs>